guys it's your boy lz hoops back at it with another performance review this time on the highly coveted nike gt cut without any further ado let's get right into it first things first let's get started with the traction the nike gt cut features an aggressive tire tread like traction pattern on a translucent sole that is meant to provide the best lateral and front to back traction as possible as you guys might have noticed, there's actually quite a bit of fraying on the forefoot already. Personally, I believe that this fraying is due to like an initial layer of protective film that Nike put on, not the rubber itself being really soft and pliable. But nonetheless, I still wouldn't recommend playing with these outdoors as they're pretty expensive. The combination of the traction pattern and the rubber compound used actually makes for really, really good, loud and tacky bite while playing basketball. If you like squeaky shoes, you'll love these shoes. I personally really enjoyed the traction and found that the traction pattern works well both on dust and clean courts. This traction is amazing on a clean court, but on the dusty court it does pick up dust, so once you wipe it will go back to normal. This pattern sticks with me as I shift left, right, and stops on a dime when needed to be. After all, the most important aspect to a basketball shoe is traction and Nike definitely killed the traction on these. Overall I think the traction is a solid 90 out of 100. Now onto the cushioning. The cushioning on this shoe is simply amazing. The React drop and midsole is very responsive and it doesn't look like it'll bottom out as quickly as the Kobe 8s or 9s. In addition to this, the full length zoom strobel and double stack heel zoom provides a really nice bouncy feeling that you feel right under your foot. The Nike GT Cuts cushioning is top tier and undoubtedly the best feature on this shoe. It reminds me a little bit of like the LeBron 11 full length zoom and uh, Lunar Lun, but the React midsole is actually way more responsive and it won't bottom out. It's crazy how Nike managed to do all of this. This is the best setup of cushioning to date in my opinion. Not only does this give the player an insane amount of cushion, but also an insane amount of court feel. And usually you sacrifice the court feel for cushioning, but not in this shoe. This shoe feels like a Kyrie on steroids. Cushioning is simply amazing and it works very well and I really have no complaints. I love this setup. The final score for the cushioning section is 95 out of 100. Moving on, let's talk about the support and lockdown. The Nike GT cut consists of a mixture of materials. The toe box and the tongue is made out of neoprene, while the rest of the shoe is made out of a performance mesh backed by a silky layer on the inside. On the sides of the shoe, Nike uses plastic to add some lateral support and containment. This combination of materials actually allows you to lace your shoes super tight and secure, increasing the lockdown aspect of the shoe. Initially, I was kind of worried that these shoes wouldn't be very flexible, but after breaking it in, I have no complaints on that end. Furthermore, the React drop-in insole has a unique pattern that keeps your foot glued to the drop-in insole, so that your foot doesn't slide around inside. The internal heel cup does its job well, and I really like the fact that you can lace these shoes super tight without it pinching the sides of your feet. I think the lockdown is perfect, and I would say that the lockdown on this shoe is actually better than that of the Kobe 9s or 8s. The support, on the other hand, is average. To me, I always felt secure and supportive in this shoe, but to others this could, you know, maybe not be the case. The GT Cuts have a relative narrow base with no external outrigger, and if you have weak ankles or are looking for a really supportive shoe, then these might not be for you. Most of the lateral containment and support from the shoe comes from the lip on the React midsole, wrapping onto your feet, and the plastic pieces on the upper. I feel like it gets the job done, and I have no complaints. In conclusion, I think the lockdown is a 10 out of 10, and the support an 8 out of 10. Finally, let's move on to the fit, comfort, style, weight, and durability section of this review. Overall, I really like the aesthetics of this shoe. It looks fast and sleek and really modern. Especially on feet, these look super, super dope. The fit, you know, it fits true to size. It fits similar to all standard Nike products, and it does feel like a Kobe. I wear a 9.5, and, and I got a 9.5 in, in these, and they fit just fine. The neoprene does stretch a bit, which is good if you have a slightly wider foot, but if you have a really wide foot, I have heard complaints about the side plastic piece squeezing the pinky. This hasn't happened to me personally, so I won't be able to comment on that. I found the shoe to be pretty comfortable, and they basically, I broke them in within an hour of playing in them. But the biggest downside of this shoe has to be the weight. These shoes are actually surprisingly heavy. They're actually heavier than the KD14, which is a high top. And I feel like the weight isn't a big deal for me, because when I wear these, I don't feel them on my feet. But, you know, preferably, I would have liked to see Nike, you know, dial back on the caging and the plastic pieces so that the shoe is just overall a lot lighter. If Nike was to make this shoe, like, weigh the same as the Kobe 9, this might be the greatest shoe of all time. In addition to this, a lot of people actually found the shoes to be pretty clunky. 
You know, I'll have to disagree on this. The GT cuts have a drop in insole instead of an exposed midsole. This can lead to a slightly clunkier heel to toe transition, but to me this feeling is very very minimal and the transition still is very smooth. It's not like the Jordan 29 or the Giannis's where the heel is super clunky, you know, almost like it goes heel, toe, heel, toe instead of a trans uh, smooth transition. I felt that these shoes actually do feel like the Kobe 9 and the Jordan 28, where the heel is a bit harder than the rest of the shoe, but it does not affect the heel to toe transition. Since I primarily play on my forefoot, the heel being harder than the front doesn't actually matter to me. It only really matters when I'm kind of, you know, curling off a screen to shoot or if I'm taking big steps, but then again, it's not a big deal. If you love the feel of the Jordan 28 and the Kobe 9, you'll love the feeling of these shoes just as much. I don't think you'd worry about the clunkiness. Finally, the durability is less than stellar on these shoes. After a couple of wears, you can already see the traction pattern is somewhat fraying off. While I'm not sure if this is due to the rubber compound or just like some sort of initial layer to protect the shoes, you know, I would really recommend against using these outside. Furthermore, the mesh and silk inner layer that they use on the sides can be really prone to rips at the sides. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the Kobe 8s, they, they're notorious for just busting through the sides, and I'm not too sure how these will fare. The high wear areas are reinforced by fuse and glue, but I'm not too sure if it would be enough. While these make a perfect indoor shoe, at $225 Canadian dollars, I would strongly recommend that you don't wear these outside unless you got some cash to burn. Overall, I do think this is a decent shoe for the price, and the value of it is subjective. I do think it is worth the price that you're paying for, but I would not pay resale for these shoes. I would just wait for the other ones to come out. Overall, I really, really like these shoes. These shoes scored a solid 91.25 out of 100, and in my opinion, the definite best shoe release in 2021 for shifty and quick players who emphasize lockdown, cushion, and traction. Thank you guys for watching and please like, subscribe, and comment. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, or tips, please comment them down below. And with that being said, uh, thanks again. Peace.